Let me, let me start just by introducing myself. I'm the uh, CEO of Spansion. At Spansion, we design, develop the technology, produce memory subsystems, memory chips. Uh, we have about 8,000 customers. We're probably in about 100,000 different products around the world, and that's really one of the, one of the themes of this presentation is that uh, a wide range of electronics that we're, we're involved in, and I, I find that uh, a lot of fun in this job. Um, I would imagine most folks got here by car. Um, you could, I guess you could have helicoptered in. Uh, but if you were in a car th today coming here, you probably had four or five expansion ships in that car with you. We're in the transmission, generally very high market share there, very high market share in engine control. Uh, certainly had them on your, anything from safety in the car, airbags, etc., cruise control. But also in the audio and the video inside of the car, the infotainment inside of the car. Um, car is a, a fascinating place to be uh, in memory in the electronics business. A lot of convergence taking place there, too. I was standing by a couple of you folks just a few moments ago, and then one, one was showing the other an itinerary. The itinerary was printed out on a printer, likely off of a expansion chip inside of that printer. Uh, we're in children's games. We're in just about everything. I tell folks that uh, when they ask what I do is wherever there's an on-off switch, you'll generally find... Uh, expansion ship uh, uh, nearby. We're in the lighting in this room. Uh, when I walk into a room nowadays, unfortunately, the first thing I'm checking is to see uh, how sophisticated is the lighting and uh, thus uh, what kind of memory is needed to run that, those electronics as well as the heating. So I, I find it an exciting job and there's really three things that I think uh, drive me in the job and I'll, that'll set up the rest of this presentation. Uh, the first one is I get to work with uh, all these different uh, electronics businesses get to be a piece of it. We have to connect to it. We have to be a big part of it. We're, in many ways, we're the heart of the, with the arteries of pumping out the data and the information to each one of these different electronic applications. So that's really that's what really drives me. The second piece that drives me is each one of these customers will give you a little glimpse, each one of these partners a little glimpse of what the next two to three years are going to look like. Because we're not designing things today to ship today. We're designing what the products are going to look like the next three, four, five years, some cases 10 years from now. A lot of cameras in this room. Cameras are a big part of our business. Get to, get to see glimpses of what the future camera technology is, is going gonna, is gonna to look like. And I'll spend a lot of time in this presentation on, on that. Uh, the third thing I like about uh, the job is you really have to think hard about what is going to get adopted in the future. By adoption, I mean is with you, if you're designed into 100,000 new products, which one of those products are actually going to be successful? And we, the consumers in this room, are the ones that decide what's going to be successful, and we all know we're fickle. We change our minds. And that's a fascinating part of my job also is to f figure out where do we really put our investment, which one of these product sets are the future. Uh, and that's kind of the back, backbone of uh, this presentation. That uh, should take about 20 minutes, and then we'll have time for questions. Uh, when I think about our business, I think of it in really three drivers, three tiers. The first one is intelligence. Every one of us consumers want more and more intelligence close to us. This one's for the chip industry, for memory in particular. We got our arms around pretty well. We've been doing it for a long time, close to 60 years. We know how to add more and more intelligence to our electronics. I'll spend a little bit more time on this. It's about processing power. It's about bandwidth, and we're pretty good at, at that as an industry. But it continuously is a challenge, and, I'll, and we'll, we'll get into that. The second one, clearly, is connectivity. Connect, connectivity is pretty key in the electronics industry. It really drives the need for more and more intelligence. This is when you get device A to work with a device B, C, D, E, F, and G. Make them all work together across a, a, a many millions of devices nowadays. So the connectivity is a big part of my business also and what we focus on. But the third piece is the one I'm here to talk about really, and this is, uh, is really the user interface. Because you, we, we have enough intelligence in our technology today. We have enough connectivity in our, in our, in our technology today. The piece that's really key is having the user interface that makes it very intuitive for everybody to use it around the world. We're no longer a multinational company, a multinational uh, economy. It's a worldwide economy. So how do you make it intuitive 
the user interface, HMI stands for Human Machine Interface, that everybody is comfortable using the electronics, using the machinery, getting the data. And that's really where the challenge is for us going, going forward and where we've put a lot of time in the last couple of years at uh, expansion. So let me dig down in, into intelligence, make sure everybody understands what I mean by intelligence. Um, I think the uh, transistor was developed maybe 65 years ago now. Kind of a couple of fun facts. Uh, I was told, I read this, uh, that for every person in this room, there's a billion transistors that's supporting your life. So if you add up all the people in the world, just over seven, seven billion people, each one of them has a billion transistors that are supporting them somewhere in the cloud, in their appliances at home, in their whatever they're using. You can think of the people around the world, amazing. And if they think that's gonna double very shortly, the second one that's interesting about a transistor nowadays, and I hope I get this right, is it's a one transistor costs about one ten millionth of a penny. So we keep driving the cost down, we can keep providing more and more power, more and more speed, uh, creating more and more intelligence. And the examples we picked here in intelligence are just, uh, these are from customers of ours, simple appliances in our home. It's supposed to be an apartment or the house on the left-hand side. You can see in the upper left-hand corner is a smart washer or dryer. I like this one a lot. This is actually a, a Japanese uh, customer. Uh, the smart washer, you just need to put the clothes in. The washer will figure out how much detergent to use. The washer will figure, figure out what, what uh, temperature of water to use. But most importantly, the washer will figure out when to run the washing machine. So it can run at a time of day when the energy, when the, when the energy is less expensive. That's a smart washer. Intelligence has risen since the last time I've washed my clothes. It's much, much different. Uh, next to that is a, a smart, uh, we call it a smart home bot. A bot is uh, any kind of a mechanical device that has to be run on a set time or a set procedure. This is actually, it's hard to tell from this, this is a vacuum cleaner. You can think of a room like this where there's a set time, 2 o'clock in the morning, 3 o'clock in the morning, where a vacuum cleaner will automatically come through here and, and vacuum every open spot on the floor. Automatic, that's a smart vacuum cleaner. A lot of intelligence there. Uh, no, no real argument there. The smart oven, one of my favorites too. You put the piece of meat in, could be roast beef, could be chicken, the oven will figure it out, the poundage, etc., and we'll make it medium rare for you. Intelligent oven. Far more intelligent than I am actually cooking my own, my own, uh, my own meal. And I think the smart refrigerator is another one that's outstanding. How old is the milk? Does the milk need to come out now? Is the beer cold enough? Uh, these things are all being developed. Some of them are actually available on the market today. I think most of them are. Uh, what are we doing in this industry, making it, these things more and more intelligent? Really, we're focusing on energy efficiency, preventive maintenance, uh, and certainly saving time. It's all about return on investment for us, the consumers. So just a small snapshot of what intelligence means when I, when I talk about it. I think the best example of intelligence is the cell phone that you have sitting in front of you or sitting in your pocket right now. I mean, it's more intelligence than that, that you have access to through that cell phone than, that, that any of us could have thought uh, not, not too long ago. Um, but that's what I mean by intelligence, and it's dri driven by the uh, transistor technology. The second pillar I put up there was connectivity. Connectivity in many ways drives the intelligence of, of, of these devices, and very key for, for my business. I, I have to be the leader in, in, in being able to put the intelligence together, also have to be the leader in, in connectivity. Um, Connectivity, I thought of an example last night. Uh, I have a seven-year-old son. My seven-year-old son was uh, playing a game with his nine-year-old cousin who's 3,000 miles away. They were on the PC playing, playing a game. That's connectivity. Couldn't happen too long ago. He doesn't see his cousin, but maybe every three to five years, yet they play a game every Saturday night or every Sunday night. Uh, so con connectivity is uh, rapidly... Uh, growing and, and, and making each one of these devices more, uh, more special. The, uh, what, what is connectivity? It's really around these standards. We all know Wi-Fi, Bluetooth. Um, uh, you have, have folks heard about Zigbee. Zigbee is a smart energy. And, 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 and really what these standards are doing is making sure that you can control and monitor all these devices in any one of these in, environments. 
And these standards are now uh, creating it so we can share information and, and, and uh, control and monitor devices without human intervention automatically, day in and day out. Uh, push, pushing the envelope there. I was with a customer a few weeks ago in the big debate was uh, what, what handheld device would they want to put this application on? The application was one that I'm sure all of us w will use. I certainly would use it. Is when you're leaving for the airport and you want to make sure the garage door went down, you want to make sure you turn the oven off, you can, you can be able to check that. That's connectivity. Better yet, when the plane lands, when you come home, you can go to your handheld device or in the car and quickly turn on that oven or uh, address the uh, temperature uh, humidity or whatever uh, inside your house to prepare your home for, for the maybe half hour, 45, one hour drive to get home so your house is ready for you when you, re when you return home. I think the best example of uh, connectivity is, is, is uh, five years ago I couldn't wait on the weekend to go to my favorite bookstore, to go to my favorite music store, buy some music and of course get a DVD or a movie and those stores are no longer there. Uh, everything is connected. I could get them all up on the screen right here, right now. So connectivity is a huge, huge driver for us. Now the third one is uh, the user interface. And this is really what's key for me because this is what drives adoption eventually of, uh, of, of our memory chips. It's the, the tipping point, if you will. Uh, industrial design is, is key for that tipping point. Everybody right away thinks about the iPad or the... Uh, the iPhone is just tremendous uh, industrial design. But the other one is certainly the user interface. And we, the consumer, for our user interface, we want something that's easy, works right the first time, it's very consistent, and it's fast. And that sounds simple. But when you're dealing with all this complexity and all this technology and all this data, that has really become the kind of the, the, the tipping point from being a small market penetrator to a, a large mass market uh, penetrator. And this is really what I wanted to talk about. The example we used here was the Razor phone from Motorola a few years back. Or um, remember very clear, clearly that uh, at the time we thought this was going to be a super successful product, maybe 650,000 units a quarter. We were all very excited about that, gearing up different manufacturing. I was actually in a different business back then, but a big focus. They ended up doing maybe seven million a quarter in units, just went right through the roof. And when you look back at it, what was the difference? It didn't bring a whole lot of new intelligence or new connectivity to the market. What it brought was a better user interface. It was cool, it was sleek, much easier to use. It could apply to everybody. Everybody could use it. It opened up the market. So the user interface was the delta difference. Down below that, we just have a picture of one of my favorites is the Nintendo Wii. This is uh, my, uh, my, my, my kids play with the Nintendo Wii. Uh, incredible motion control and how that's just opened it up to many, many different countries, many, many different markets. And that business has done much, much better. Why? Because it's much more intuitive for anybody to go and play. So the game business has been very good. Uh, last few years, particularly with the, the advent of uh, that motion technology. So you put these three together, the intelligence, not as much of a problem for us, I can tell you that in, the, in these industries, not easy, but we, we have the capability to continuously grow intelligence. Piles and mountains of data that we can turn into action very quickly. We have that technology. Connectivity, it's happening everywhere. Uh, you, you look around, these standards are just multiplying uh, around the world, you can touch anywhere in the world at any time. Uh, not much of an issue. Uh, still work to be done. The biggest issue is in this user interface so we can apply it to, to more and more people and grow these, and, and grow these markets. So the convergence is happening and new ar architectures are emerging and those are the exciting things that are that, uh, day by day now uh, that we work on. So let me, let me just f finish up here. Um, there's about 7 billion people in the, in the, in the world and growing. Uh, I, I hear there's uh, 2 billion inter internet users. I think there's roughly 2 billion uh, Google searches done every day. Uh, I've read recently 16 billion devices connected to the internet. We're connected. There's plenty of intelligence out there. We're very intelligent. We're very connected. I'd argue economically we're connected and we're intelligent as a world, not just uh, key parts of the world, the entire world. I think we learn that every day, how connected as a world we are economically. Certainly, technically, we're getting more and more connected as a world. And socially, 
get more and more connected as a world. And, I, and I, it really isn't a metaphor. Uh, people write books and say, hey, the world's getting flatter, the world's getting smaller, the world's getting closer, the world's getting more connected. It's, they really aren't metaphors. It, it is happening. I think we're in a really great time to change how the world works if you do what I do, which is really work with everybody else here and with the user interface and bringing more and more of this technology to make the world work better in all these different industries I touched upon. I didn't touch about on public works. Public works, a lot of work going in in the smart grid and things like that on applications around that. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't touch upon supply chain, around the world supply chain uh, coordination, et cetera. Tremendous amount of work going on there. I didn't touch upon natural resources and, and the, kind of the monitoring of natural resources, um, but a lot of work being done around that too. Again, we won't see the, the fruits of that for the next couple of years, but the key to the fruits of that will be these user interface uh, technologies that we're working hard on.